Hello, I'm Yixue Zhao, and I'm a Computing Innovation Fellow at UMass Amherst. Today, I'm very happy to share our work together with my PhD institution, USC, and also BUPT in China, assessing the feasibility of web request prediction models on mobile platforms. So before I start, I do want to point out that this paper is actually part of a larger story in my PhD thesis, where I focused on how to speed up mobile apps using different prefetching techniques. If you're interested in this line of work, please feel free to check out my dissertation online. Okay, let's come back to this paper. So in this paper, we focused on history-based prefetching in particular, where the input is the user's historical data. And then based on those historical data, we build some sort of prediction models to predict the user's future requests. And then we will just prefetch those requests. So believe it or not, the biggest challenge I faced in this type of work is actually to get the input which is the user's historical data. So the reason it's so hard is actually pretty nice because we finally pay more and more attention to the privacy of the end users. And as you know, there's like a privacy regulations and the policies all around the world, such as the GDPR and so on. So this restricted us on how much data we can collect from the end users. So this is a very nice trend, but it makes it very hard for us to get the data to evaluate history-based prefetching techniques. So after searching around, the closest data set in public that we could find is LiveLab, where they collected the data from 25 iPhone users for an entire year. But the problem is this study was uh, done over a decade ago that doesn't really reflect how we use the mobile apps today. Because I mean, 10 years ago, I don't even remember if I had a smartphone. So nowadays, if I want to repeat such a study to collect the data, it wouldn't be possible because of the you know, privacy issues and so on that I just talked about. You could not imagine to collect it for an entire year. So this got me thinking that what if we can build very, very small prediction models to predict the user's future requests based on a teeny tiny data of the end user that they are more likely to say yes to because you know, at the end of the day, we're still trying to help the end users to speed up their phones, right? So the question is, can we build very small models that are more practical to get the data from the end users nowadays? And that is our focus in this paper. Well, easier said than done, even with very small data set, there's still no public data set available and it's really hard to collect. So my data collection journey traced all the way back to ICSI 2018. So after I presented my paper on another prefetching idea that doesn't require historical data, I was thinking about this direction of history-based techniques. And I talked to a lot of people. Luckily, one of them is Hao Yu, who thought the idea was very interesting and said it might be possible to collect this type of data on our own. So long story short, after tens of paperwork and back and forth and so on, we finally got the precious data set. So let's take a look at what data we got. Compared to LiveLab, that the data is collected for an entire year, we restricted our data set to only 24 hours, which is way shorter than what was done previously. And also, instead of uh, analyzing the data from 25 undergraduates at Rice University, our study is based on over 10,000 mobile users with diverse occupations at BUPT University. And also, we didn't hire any participants and didn't have any contact with the mobile users because uh, the users are everyone who access the campus network during that random day. And there's some more ethical considerations in this process, and you can find more details in our paper. Great. So now we have the data set and we can finally answer some interesting questions. The first question is, of course, do small prediction models even work? 
because previously the prediction models are built on top of the data collected for like several months or even an entire year. But now with very small data set that spans only 24 hours, we don't even know if we can predict anything using such a small data set. So the first question aims to answer if there are any repetitive requests, which are the prerequisite for any history-based prefetching techniques, because they can only predict the requests that appeared in the past. So long story short, the answer is yes. And the more details of repetitive requests across different end users can be found in our paper. But today, I want to focus on two other research questions. So the second research question is, can we reuse existing algorithms? As I said, there's existing solutions that build prediction models on larger data sets. So we wanted to see if they still work really well on small data set, because if they do, then we can reuse prior work instead of inventing some new algorithm from scratch. This can avoid some duplicated effort, right? So for this part, we focus on the accuracy of the prediction models built with existing algorithms that we selected three that are widely adopted and also developed a naive technique that aggressively prefetches everything that appeared in the past to serve as the baseline for our evaluation. So the rationale of this algorithm selection can also be found in our paper. Great. So the third research question focused on, can we reduce the training data sets even more? Because we really want to restrict how much data we need from the end users to try to build the smallest model possible. And to answer this research question, we focused on how to select a good and enough training data. To ease our empirical study, we first developed this hip harness framework. I won't go into the details, but basically it is a customizable framework that allow you to study the impact of different aspects of the prediction models. Like, you know, you can turn the knobs with the different parameters to study their impact. One example of such a knob is how much historical request is used to build the prediction model. So I do want to point out the input and output. The input is the historical request of a particular user. In total, we collected over 50 million history requests and uh, we built over 7 million prediction models for each individual user. So for each user, there could be multiple models because you can build the model using different prediction algorithms. And you can also slice and dice how much training data is used to build the model. And the output of hip harness is the prediction model's accuracy. Great, with hip harness, we conducted many experiments. And now let me show you the results of our RQ2 and RQ3. So to answer RQ2, we applied existing algorithms on the very small data set that spans 24 hours. And we used the three widely adopted accuracy metrics. In the interest of time, I will only focus on discussing the static precision. So this is very interesting. As you can see, this blue bar is MP algorithm using our data set. The result is very similar to another study that was conducted over a decade ago. This is very interesting because that study actually used the live lab data set that was collected for an entire year. But our data set is only 24 hours, which is significantly smaller. But that yielded very similar results. So this shows that small models are very promising and we can reduce the model size significantly and our results are not any worse. So another interesting finding is that the best performing algorithm DG on the left of the red bar uh, achieved the static precision of over 40%, which is kind of comparable to uh, the state-of-the-art prefetching technique Paloma that I mentioned. That's what I presented at XC 2018. So this shows that existing algorithms are very promising because we apply them as is without any optimization or fine-tuning. 
and that already achieved kind of comparable results to the state of the art. So this means we could probably improve them even more and reuse them instead of inventing new algorithms from scratch. So for RQ3, in order to select the good training data, we developed three data pruning strategies. I won't go into the details, but basically the results and the discussions are all in the paper. And we found that they are very promising because they can significantly reduce the training data size and they don't harm the accuracy that much. So today I'll focus more on how do we select enough training data? So this is inspired by the trend of the accuracy across different algorithms. So this is an example of the static precision trend um, when the number of requests grows. As you can see, they converge at some point, right? And this trend actually holds for all three accuracy metrics. And this got me thinking that there might be a cutoff point and after this cutoff point, the more data you feed your model, your results probably won't change much. So in order to identify this cutoff point to see if we can find the smallest model possible, we developed this sliding window approach, as you can see in this diagram. Imagine we have 10 historical requests and we have a fixed window size that you can customize, say five. Then I build the prediction model using the first five requests, then second five, da, 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 until the last five requests. And the point here is that we want to build the models of the same size throughout the entire day to take into account users different behaviors throughout the day. So long story short, we selected 11 window sizes for this study and there's lots of accuracy results of those models and we grouped the results based on the window size. So in the end, there's 11 groups of the results of the prediction models of the same window size. With that result, we conducted a NOVA test, which basically can tell you, given a pair of two groups, are their results statistically significantly different or not? This is the summary of the ANOVA test result. For example, if we're looking at DG's static precision, we found out the cutoff point is 400, and that is because ANOVA tells us that if the window size is over 400 and for all the pairs of different window sizes, ANOVA says no, there is no statistically significant difference across their results. But when the window size is below 400, for all the pairs, ANOVA says yes, there is a statistically significant difference across their results. And that is how we concluded that the cutoff point is 400. And very interestingly, we found out that there exists a cutoff point across all the algorithms and all the accuracy metrics. So to summarize, here are the key takeaways from our work. Most importantly, we found that small models do work. This is very encouraging because we really want to limit the amount of data we need from the users. And this work points out this direction is promising and practical to use. And another additional benefit besides the privacy concern is that you know our mobile devices are resource constrained. So using small models can also reduce the cost of running history-based predictions models. And we also found that we can reuse existing solutions because they are quite promising as we showed in this presentation. And also we found less is more. In some cases, not only can the data pruning reduce the model's size significantly, but they can also improve the model's accuracy in some cases at the same time. And what's more interesting is that this finding actually challenged a prior conclusion that said history-based prefetching is not effective on mobile platforms. So our results show that this is a very promising direction that reopens this area, hopefully can encourage more work in this domain. Great. 
Last but not least, I want to thank my co-authors and also the sponsors of my work. Without them, this work wouldn't be possible. Great, that's it. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about our work or my dissertation or anything, feel free to reach out and connect with me on social media. You can also check out my website for the latest news of my work. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video.